What's going on? It's Thursday, September 28th, 2023. I am Tyler Herchuk, and this is KYN Live. And I'm joined by a very special guest this week. Uh, they are a voice actor, an on-screen actor, a stage actor, a singer, producer, and probably a lot more. Uh, you may know them from Potent Dogs, uh, Titty Tussle, uh, several different audiobooks, Marvel Snap. It's Izzy Tugman. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Not too bad. How you doing? Very well, thank you. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, as you may or may not know, we're going to talk about the KYN7. So seven of the top news yeah. stories of the week uh, that are stupid, funny, or weird, or all of the above, and I will get your reactions. Um, and of course, I'm going to keep track on how how right you are with your your guesses. So, uh, Well, probably never, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Perfect. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it with story number seven, reported by ABC7. Uh, there is a Delta Airlines flight that was from Atlanta to Barcelona, and it was forced to turn around due to the actions of one passenger. Uh, and I'll give you a hint. The passenger did not assume there was like an alien on the back of the, the airplane. Um, but what did the passenger do that caused this international flight to turn around? Oh, God, did they like shit their pants or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's what my brain defaulted to. Like somebody Jeez. made a huge stink. He's one for and... one, people. Um, what? Seriously? Uncontrollable diarrhea all the way down the aisle of the plane. No. Uh, I'm assuming somebody. I didn't think I was going to be right. Yeah. I figured it would be somebody just like having a fit, which people often do in airlines, I feel like lately. Yeah. Like that's the thing. You got to have like, oh, your social media moment. Well, I'm going to complain about this and get off the flight. And mm. um, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's a medical emergency yeah very embarrassing for that person and we have a um, video clip here uh as well um <laughs> so as you can see it was quite the oh, uh, no. runway of feces oh my god oh yeah. it was like everywhere yeah they had no 36 passengers on board and they were flying over central virginia when they were forced to turn back the pilot oh. told air traffic control that there was a biohazard issue about two hours after they departed and they had to go back to atlanta stop oh that's a nightmare i was embarrassed enough when i just fainted on a plane once over the atlantic wait geography crap i was going to israel that's atlantic, yeah the atlantic yeah i was like halfway over the ocean and definitely fainted maybe could have died but yeah diarrhea is worse i'll take you that over yeah, yeah. Well cool. Wow, I, mean, I can't believe I guessed that. Yeah. That's awful. I hope that person's feeling okay. Hopefully. Uh, I'm wondering yeah. if that's like a just like foreshadowing for the people going to Spain, being like, you're gonna have explosive diarrhea if you're not used to this food. <laughs> so bad. Maybe just fast before yeah. going on a flight from now on. Just like do a cleanse, make sure there's nothing in there. Probably a good idea. I'm I'm flying yeah. on uh on Saturday, so I'll be sure to, to not eat anything beforehand. Don't take those laxatives right right before the flight. It's a bad idea. La Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> laxative <laughs> roulette. I have one laxative and four placebos. Just see what happens. Mm, chocolate. Laxative chocolate. Who cares? It's chocolate. Oh, it's amazing. fine. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, moving on to story six, but before I do, I just want to mention that you have a chance to send in your super chats to get your question or statement read on the air. Uh, and if you don't want to donate through YouTube or you can't catch the show live, go to kynchat.com and you can leave a question or statement anytime that we'll read on the air. Now on to story number six, reported by Newsflare. So there's a woman at an Apple store in China. And she wanted to steal a high-end iPhone, but it was tied down by an anti-theft security cord. So what did she do? <laughs> the first thing that popped in my head is like her grabbing the iPhone, taking off running, and then falling backwards when it like the cord snaps. And then being like, Ugh! And then not wanting to let go of it and like everybody's surrounding her and she's just glued to it. But that's my cartoonic imagination going wild. I don't really know. Um, uh, did she bring wire cutters? I guess that would be the way to do it. Uh, wire cutters in the sense that everybody has the same tools that she used to break the um, cord. Oh, shoot. She did break the cord. Did she take her keys and like saw at it? Uh, or oh, we have audio uh, video footage. She bit right through the cord and then took oh, dang. the phone. That worked. Yeah. So she's just fighting away. Oh apparently, God. Apparently it took her about 10 minutes to steal. And it. people just waited. Where were other people when this happened? <laughs> Oh, she's like, oh, she's just like gnawing on the cord. <laughs> I'd be worried about what kind of germs are on that cord lady. Like, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I don't love, think I'd want to do that. I love how she was so nonchalant at the end. She was like, oh, 256 gigabytes. Oh, that's not bad. Nice, nice. And it's already in her purse. <laughs> <laughs> so it took her 10 it's minutes, 10 minutes to steal that phone. Um, and then the theft triggered the anti-theft like alarm, but the staff were busy and they assumed it was a false alarm. So they turned it off. Uh, and <laughs> she then, just got away with it. Well, no, because uh, China. So they were able to use facial recognition technology to track her down. So that's what I'm going to say with technology is so stupid to steal anything now because they know where to find you. There's no hiding. That's, I don't know. So did was there justice? Did they uh, get her? It just says they tracked her down. Know. But I mean, <laughs> with all Apple products, they're going to break it if you steal it anyway. So it's kind of pointless. Right. That's how I figured. I'm like, after all that, you probably like wore down your tooth. You need to go to the dentist now. Like that's going to cost more than the new iPhone did it in the first exactly. place. I don't know. Is it worth it? Guys, no, don't steal. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. Oh, just don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> on, on to story number five, reported by KESQ News Channel 3. Uh, City of Palm Springs, California, agreed to revise a proposed AIDS memorial sculpture after locals complained about the original design. So what was the issue that people had with this AIDS memorial sculpture? Oh, God. Oh, no. No, I probably shouldn't even say the first thing uh -oh. that came to mind. Well, it's really offensive. And I'm like, well, okay, I understand AIDS. It's a horrible affliction that, that affects many, many people. But I was like, did they put up butt sex or something? Like, with the, how offensive could it be? Um, I did say it. Sorry. I don't know how, like, PC or whatever the show is. Um, brain, no filter. Um, But I don't know. That was the only thing I could think of that I was like, that's offensive and wrong um, I mean, and not an accurate representation of, of, of all of AIDS. Uh -huh. Um, transmission. Um, oh God, I'm just embarrassing uh, myself here. Just, just, Help! Just a little disclaimer. Uh, the, the views of Isabella Tugman do not reflect the views of Know Your News Live. Exactly. Uh, um, or even Isabella Tugman's views. She just <laughs> says stuff. Okay, yeah. Why? Uh, let me Mute aid button. you here with a, a response. <laughs> um, and you were kind of half right. Uh, oh, no. People thought it looked like a giant asshole, and we have pictures. Oh, no. Oh. Who? design that and what is that supposed to mean i don't understand is well, that supposed to be a white blood cell ooh. or or one of those white, like, blood white life savers could be i think it's a well, like, of white white, blood cell. well because it, it affects it affects the t-cells yeah. affect um <laughs> i can't talk <laughs> jeez okay um this is middle, life, right they made the hole in the middle big enough for people to jump through that was a bad idea too oh no well that does kind of look fun but yeah, I see how it looks like a butthole. So what? I, I, yeah, I'm curious where the what the inspiration was for this. Yeah, yeah. Th there's no explanation on the inspiration. It says the sculpture st stands at nine feet tall, uh, and it was round limestone with concentric carved circles symbolizing the diverse impact of AIDS on the community. Uh, its design was intended to evoke feelings of connection, reflection, and hope, but too many Just people the wrong thought kind it of connection. Like a butthole. Yeah. yeah. It does look like a butthole. Uh, and the task force is planning the sculpture. Uh, they're planning to revise the design. Okay. Yeah, um, on its own, it's cool. But I just worry about it in conjunction with the whole AIDS symbology. <laughs> they didn't quite nail that one. Nail? They did not. Ooh. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, they're, they're, they really got to go back to the drawing board and uh, drill something down and drilled mm. okay sorry okay innuendos yeah uh in your endo uh reminder in guys your... uh get in your super chats to have your question or statement read on the air or if you can't catch the show live go to kynchat.com leave a contribution at any time and we'll read your question or statement on the next show on to story number four do you like karaoke izzy i do i'm a singer so any that chance would... to sing, why not? Fa yeah. I, did, I feel like some singers hate karaoke because they're like, this is when normal people think they can do what I do. But it's good that you love karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it a ton, but it's fun. Of exactly. Course, yeah. uh, so the most or well, one of the most popular songs performed typically by men at karaoke bars is actually also considered the world's deadliest karaoke song and has contributed to the death of over a dozen people, particularly in the Philippines. What oh, do no. you think the song is? People have died doing karaoke? Yeah. How? What are they doing? 
<laughs> I'm a little scared. Um, 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 well, oh gosh. I'll give you a um, hint. Oh. The singer, legendary artist uh, in the 60s. Oh. See, I was thinking like Queen and I was thinking, okay, Bohemian Rhapsody because it's like seven minutes and that that's a long thing. But he was more he wasn't active in the 60s. No. So I obviously am wrong. Um, I was just thinking like high notes and marathon and like, you know, sing till you die. I don't know. And then I'm like, well, I will walk 500 miles. And that's the can't. That's not either. That's not the 60s. God, I don't know. I don't do karaoke enough. <laughs> I'm not sure. It was 99 bottles of bit. No, I'm kidding. It was My oh, Way by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> really? People are dying singing My Way? So the re- so what are they the- doing? <laughs> it's not so much that they're dying, that they're getting killed. Um, We shouldn't be laughing about this. Oh, but no. over the past few decades, there have been a series of violent uh, incidents in the Philippines as a result of people singing this song. And one of the most prolific cases happened in 2007 when a 29 year old man was killed by a security guard at the bar because the guard thought he was singing out of tune and wanted him to stop. And he kept singing. And that also still has nothing to do with my way. And what kind of psychopaths are that intent on people singing in tune that they'll kill over? Uh, uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, what? I wouldn't See, be a security thought, guard. Yeah. Like my me being a singer my whole life, never thought I was in danger of sing when I sing. Now I'm a little concerned for my well-being. I sing a lot. Yeah. Should I be concerned? You should should be I never sing worried. my way? Ever. I don't I still don't understand how my way specifically is what white people die? Is it cursed? I think it's. Is there, did somebody curse my way? I'm curious if it's it's sung so much that like just numbers wise, it's like it's skewed. That's weird. Yeah. Wow. It's that kind one of kind of like silences me. Kind of, to be yeah, right. I'm like that. That. Mm. It is kind of yeah. ironic that at the end of the day, the security guard did it his way. Uh, on to story number three, reported by the <laughs> India Times. Great segue, Tyler. Uh, there's a residential <laughs> building in southwest China where a lot of farmers from nearby villages have been moving to. But as the saying goes, farmers got a farm, and there's one particular tenant who's causing a huge issue with his neighbors. What's this farmer doing at this apartment building in China? Is he growing marijuana? Because that, <laughs> that smells very strong. Yeah. yeah, I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what is he growing? Like giant cute. I I don't want to go there. I've already been very <laughs> bad, Izzy, about the. Mm. Oh. Um, I'm like giant cucumbers for suggestive uses. Um, where is my head today? Um, <laughs> well, I also I I attended like a a, a steamy romance narrator thing because i also narrate those so that's where my head is today guys i'm sorry i it's it's part of the the trade it's the what are they hazards i'm the hazards. I, I have no words anymore hazards of the trade that's the phrase i mean, I talk for a living i can't think for a living guys it's just i can't do both i feel you i feel you i had an audition <laughs> earlier about uh, a french english kind of uh, smut i do smut as well so i i get yeah. it yeah um but no, we have a video clip. He was raising cows on his balcony. Stop. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Oh. Uh, and I mean, w- when I hear raising oh. cows, I think like big cows. But I mean, the ones that were on his balcony look pretty tiny. They're little cows. I mean, I feel bad for the cows maybe not having a lot of space. It probably stinks. That's probably the, that was the, the biggest yeah, downer. That was the big yeah. one. So the cows weighed between 20 and 45 pounds. Uh, and one day there was like noise, obviously, and foul odor. And so the neighbors alerted the authorities who took them. That was the video that we saw. Uh, but apparently the person keeps trying to secretly bring the cows back. Oh, no. No, that's weird. Cows don't need to be on balconies, guys. I'm I'm pretty supportive of a lot of things. But when it, when it comes to animal rights, I'm sort of like, give a cow some space. You know, yeah. I just, I don't know about that one. I feel like there's a story here. Or there's like an, there's like a um a partnership like a like an un, unexpected partnership with this farmer and like a frat boy because a frat boy would like sneak girls in and this farmer's trying to sneak 
cow cows you know, it's like, he's like let me let me get your your notes bro like how's he like he's like oh i'm gonna like put a cow under my shirt and act you know like non how do you just sneak a cow into an apartment building i don't, I don't know i don't know how you how you do that but. i don't know um one more reminder guys to get in your super chats if you have a question or statement you want read on the air or go to kynchat.com leave a contribution at any time and we'll read your question or statement on the next show on to story number two reported by 19 news there's a man named aaron brock and he was granted parole in ashtabula ohio where he'd been locked up for felonious assault which sounds like the name of like a like a snacks <laughs> player or something. That's uh, just funny. So he was locked up for felonious assault uh, and he was fitted with an ankle monitor. And the first thing he decided to do when he got out was visit a local Ace Hardware store. This is not a commercial for Ace Hardware, but what did the guy do next at the hardware store? Well, I figured he'd probably get that thing off his ankle. He tries to find a tool like a bolt cutter and, and hack off that. That so ankle bracelet. He actually got the Chinese woman from the first story to chew the ink. No, I'm kidding. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it all could. Um, yeah. He took a pair of hedge clippers off the rack. Yeah. And he cut off the, mo yeah. the monitor and put it on the shelf. Um, and here's video of him going in. And just, yeah. See, right. You Then you think of like, what's your tool of choice? Are you going for the bolt cutters? He goes for the hedge trimmer. Okay, yeah. I don't know if that's the. I'm not sure if that's the the best tool. If you're gonna what use a tool, maybe like a chisel and yeah. a hammer. Like, what's the best tool for taking off your ankle bracelet? Well, I don't this know, guy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious if there's studies like where they just bring <laughs> a bunch of ankle monitors. But don't they field. have like ink or alarms that go off or something happens with the ankle yeah, bracelet? You... Also, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Would... Okay. That would be good marketing for like the hedge trimmers being like can cut through the toughest ankle monitor. I know. So there's a branding opportunity here for sure. Exactly. So yeah. now here's the best part. So two days later, 19 News was outside the hardware store finishing up the story and they spotted the guy in the parking lot. Oh, no. <laughs> he was going to McDonald's and they called Stop. the cop and the cops got him. Duh. Jeez, and now he's back to jail. Oh. You violated parole. And this is so great. You know, your ankle bracelet. Exactly. This is great uh, marketing for McDonald's now because this guy risked jail to get a McFlurry or whatever. <laughs> Can you imagine he risks jail to go to Freedom. McDonald's? Freedom means McFlurry. <laughs> this is also a branding opportunity for McDonald's. Uh, can you imagine? Taste your freedom with McFlurry. <laughs> he risked his parole to go to McDonald's <laughs> and they're like, Sorry, like our, our shake machine's broken. I know, right? In true McDonald's fashion. <laughs> Ice cream machine is broken. <laughs> no yes. freedom for you. No freedom. Maybe he's getting freedom fries. You never know. Mm, yeah, we Maybe. don't call them that. that. Make freedom. <laughs> yes. On to story number one, uh, reported by the BBC. So two years ago, there was this Danish artist named uh, Jens Hanning, uh, and he was commissioned by the Kunsten... Kunsten Museum in Aalborg, Denmark, uh, to produce two paintings and was paid about 500,000 kroner or around 46,000 US dollars to do the work. Mm. Uh, the museum was not happy with the two pieces of art he provided. And after a long legal battle, Mr. Hanning was finally ordered to repay the money. Do you know Ooh. why they weren't happy? Um... I either think he like just traced the Mona Lisa or something like that, or or pulled a Jackson Pollock, and he's just not original anymore. Sorry, you just can't throw paint at something and call it art all the time because he did it first, and you're not original anymore. Just well, kidding. I support artists, but I don't know. I can't think of. I'm I'll give, curious. I'll give you a hint. He named his project "Take the Money and Run." Does that? Oh shoot! So is it a blank canvas? Ding ding ding. Ah! He gave him two oh, blank canvases. No, that yeah. is very high art of him, but also pretty wrong because he made a lot of money. Well, what's even funny though is the museum director named uh, Lars Anderson decided to show them anyway, which he said upset, uh, upset his curatorial staff. But he was like, this is hilarious. I think it's really funny. Uh, That's the, where a lot of art has moved to. It's like the whole Banksy thing. Somebody like put a banana 
as they're, you know, and they're like, watch it decompose and progress in the banana stages because it's art. And somebody spent like a bajillion dollars on a banana. <laughs> I don't it's know. All... I mean, this is art for you. High art. Yeah. It's all money laundering, I think, at this point. I mean, uh, the uh... It's in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a it's a polar bear in a snowstorm covering his nose. That's what it is. Uh, the artist says at the museum, oh, no, no, like it's all white, right? So he's just like, it's just all Oh, white. <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Where did that come from? Maybe it's a Canadian phrase. I don't know. Oh, yes, Canada. That would make we sense. don't have dim polar bears no. down in Arizona. I'll go outside and look if I can find one after this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so the artist says that the museum has actually made more money than they invested because of the publicity, uh, but he doesn't plan to take the mm -hmm. case any further. So it sounds like he has to just take his cut his losses. So has to, yeah, pay it back. He does have to pay it back, but they ended up making tons of money. So that's not kind of that. You know, he was kind of smart in that because it does become a publicity play at that point. Ergo, they make a lot of money. They should let him keep the money. But I agree, he kind of. <laughs> The, I mean, the the thought is high art. The effort isn't. Oh yeah. Um, but what matters in in the art world is it the effort or is it the meaning behind the symbology? I don't know. It Maybe I should be a high artist. Maybe I'm in the wrong field here because <laughs> I could just give them a blank canvas and be like, uh. I mean, there, there's there's high art. And then there's high art that involves, you know, no scale. drugs and things. Zero like scale. Oh, right. Um, oh, I don't condone the drugs. Right. But I am drugs. I don't need drugs. Have you heard me? I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> Look at me. I am the drugs now. <laughs> I am the drugs. <laughs> well, that was story number one. So you, you hung out through seven through one. Um, do you have any favorites? Any favorite stories? Anything that favorites? jumped out? I, you know, I really like the art story just because of like the... I don't know if it's poetic justice that they end up making all this money and it's kind of like bullshit. It's just funny. It's, I, I just, I don't know. I love the art world too. So anything, I went as a Banksy painting, Banksy painting for Halloween once. That was fun. I just that. cut up a shirt and like wore a frame and then just painted like the Banksy art. It was like, you know, I, I like that stuff because it's That's crazy. Genius. Yeah, have, it was fun. Do you have any, any costumes lined up for this year? So I am a Harry Potter nerd. So I do have a Hermione costume, but my boyfriend still hasn't read Harry Potter. And um, and I, we like to do couples costume stuff. So we're trying to decide. We want to do like a big Halloween bash. Um, we might do like the Frankenstein, Frankenstein's wife thing, because that's cool. Um, we'll see. To be continued. I actually suggested today to my producer with Poden Dogs. I'm like, I really want a costume for my character Cloud. And that would be awesome. So I might have to cosplay my character. Um, she's badass. But to be continued, I probably won't have that ready for this year. <laughs> Maybe next year. Either way, it's cool um, as hell. And yeah, ironically enough, on brand ish for for me and my girlfriend, uh, her dog looks like Dobby. So we might just like throw oh, a pillowcase yeah. over her and I give her a sock. That. Please do. Um, yeah, like just glue a sock to the pillowcase and have her walk oh, yeah. That's perfect. It'll be amazing. It's all going to be like Harry Pottered out and yes. do the whole thing. The whole universe. Well, well, we'll get everybody in the in the uh, community to dress a different character. I would love to do a big Harry Potter party. Harry Potter bash. That'd be awesome. I'm one of those guys. I can't help it. It's like my dream right there. I freaking love Harry Potter. I Pure love up. it. Okay. I love it. I know. Um, yes. Well, thank you so much, Izzy, for Hi. coming to hang out. Uh, tell the people what you're doing and where they can find you. Yes. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm Isabella Tugman or Izzy. Find me at Izzy Voiceover on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all over the Internet. It's just me. I'm the only Isabella Tugman. Uh, my website is IzzyVoice.com. And I've got lots of audiobooks coming up. I've got some games. I've got animations. I've got music. I've got a lot of cool stuff upcoming. So stay tuned. Amazing. Well, that'll Thank do it for you. KYN Live. Uh, tune in. Not next Thursday. There's not a show next Thursday unless wah, something wah. changes between now and next Thursday. Um, but you heard it here first, kids. Um, but Thursday after that, 4 p.m. Eastern, for more news stories that are totally real but totally ridiculous, uh, Joel, press the big red button, please. Until then, thank you so much, Izzy. Thank you for Yay. watching, and all the best. Bye.